This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles. And, you know, we talk about the muse and all of the wonderful plants and things that come out of this very ancient plant of food and fiber and fuel. Just amazing. And it's a 10,000 year odyssey. And so we have learned, or we are learning, and discovering all sorts of things about this 10,000 years. About hemp and cannabis and hashes, cannabis and religion, cannabis and medicine, cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. And so our odyssey today is not really far away, but it is the big island. And for those of you that don't know where the big island, it is the island of Hawaii. And it's called the big island because it is big. And Madam Pelly is creating new land so it will be even bigger. So our guest today is from the big island of Hawaii. Brent Norris from the Hawaii Cannabis Organization. Aloha, Brent, and thank you for coming back. Aloha, Marcia. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, the last time we talked, you told us about your uh, spring equinox and about the consciousness or raising the consciousness about this plant. Tell me, how did that go? Oh, the, the event was fantastic. Uh, we filled the room. Um, we uh, had a growers panel, and so a lot of beginners uh, learned how to start growing, and a lot of advanced growers that have been growing for many, many years had an opportunity to ask uh, three different uh, or four different expert growers on the panel uh, all sorts of questions. But said, now what's, what did you mean by the consciousness? That's, that intrigues me. Well, uh, cannabis is, is really large, both as an industry, as a plant, as a medicine, as an idea um, for, for personal freedom as well. And depending on what level of consciousness you're at, you may have different beliefs or thoughts. Like some folks aren't even really that aware of what, patients go through uh, to obtain cannabis medicine or what uh, inmates are going through for minor charges of possession of cannabis, uh, some with life sentences. So depending on your level of awareness, you may uh, or, or may not participate in, in certain parts of uh, what's going on right now. Wonderful. So that's, that's okay, now I understand. Now you tell me you are having an event this week, and that's at the end of May. So again, before we get into that, you are on the Big Island, and Madame Pelly is showing what Madame Pelly can be. Tell us, how far are you from Madame Pelly? Well, uh, where I live is about the same distance from the current fissure eruptions in the lower East Rift Zone um, and the Kilauea Summit that has the large ash cloud that so many videos have been showing. So, so this event Friday will not be affected by what's going on with, with the volcano? No, it, it will not be. We'll, we'll be in Hilo in, uh, in a safe, secure um, building. There's no problem with the lava. Um, we could get some bad air. You know, every, everything right now depends on which way the wind blows. Well, tell me, how far is Hilo from the volcano? Uh, that's a good question. I would say between 15 and 20 miles. Uh, straight line as the crow flies. Okay, because you know most people, I've gotten calls from cousins I didn't know I had, and we're on Oahu, and they say, well, 
How's the volcano? Are you all right? So people don't have a sense of Hawaii at all. You know, and, and I think most people go to the Caribbean and they think of these little islands and they can't imagine the vastness of Hawaii. So now, now that we got the geography taken care of, tell us about this event that's coming up. Well, we've, this event is going to be hosted by um, a couple of people. Uh, one of them is uh, an incoming leader that we'll be announcing at the event. Uh, for the Hawaii Patients Union, and then also we have sort of a superstar author, uh, Ethan Nebelkoff, who uh, wrote the book, uh, The Herbal Connection, um, to help people understand how herbs work to relax and detoxify the body. So, so that uh, these natural, the Mother Nature's garden uh, which includes cannabis. So he's going to talk about all the different natural plants that we can or can use, have used, will use. That's that's right. Um, uh, Mr. Nebelkoff was uh, talking about herbs and helping people. Well, he wrote his book, gosh, ten years before Terence McKenna wrote his book, Food of the Gods. So he's got some very early insights. And he's also a really great leader of conversations in this area. So we'll talk about a lot of herbs, including cannabis. And uh, how can we uh, participate? Can um, how do people reach you? How do people? How do you? Can they register? Is there a cost? Uh, they can RSVP on our website. Um, and then that's going to enter them into a free drawing. Um, we're going to give T-shirts away. We're going to give some herbs away. Not we won't be giving cannabis away, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll be giving a, a special combination of herbs that's listed in Ethan's book um, to folks that are are there. At least until we run out of herbs. Wonderful. Well, we just posted the uh, address so that people can participate. Is there a way to, for us uh, that are not there, to participate uh, by Skype or Facebook Live or any of those things? Well, if, if anyone's interested and in, in unable to make the meeting, we'll certainly run a video camera and live stream it if helpful. Um, we do that sort of thing on Facebook. Oh, uh, wonderful. So Absolutely. I would, I would say stay tuned to Facebook.com slash Hawaii.patient. Hawaii.patient. So that's different. The address is different from your um, Hawaii Cannabis Organization. So that's different. That's right. So th repeat that, the, the address, it's, Facebook address. It's Facebook. Uh, so Facebook.com. Uh, forward slash Hawaii dot patient. Hawaii dot patient. And so it's a live stream. And what time? We'll, we'll run out. Okay, what time is that on Friday? Friday, the, what's the date of Friday? Friday the 25th at uh, 5 p.m. Okay. 5 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And that is Absolutely. Friday the 25th at 5 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. How long will the event be? We'll run about two hours, um, but we, we, generally, we generally don't leave the event until every question has been answered. So anyone that comes, that regardless of what level they're at with their skills or consciousness or whatever, we're going to make sure that their questions get answered. Well, I have some questions you and I talked about the last time. And that is, how have we moved? The legislature has closed. Did anything come out of the legislature that would move this industry forward? Well, yeah. So when we're when we're talking about the industry, um, you know, eight investment teams, um, they were able to move the industry forward. Um, 
to hopefully gain more market share for their businesses. Um, and they're doing that by uh, what's called reciprocity. So uh, reciprocity means that a patient that has a license in another state, like California, for example, will be able to fly here, get a license, and go and buy from the dispensary. In, in our case, we'll have a dispensary across the street from the airport for them. Um, and what this does is, in Hawaii, this will double the number of patients on any given island on any given day. So it's quite a, quite a windfall for those uh, investment teams. What, now, when does that begin? The reciprocity, when does that begin? That, that's a really good question. Um, e even though they're, they're making law, uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to work anytime soon. Um, like the dispensary program yes. itself, you know, we've, we've had the law for years. And so I, it, that's a really good question. I don't think anyone really knows when it'll happen. Yeah, okay. Now, now another issue we talked about was this one of not quite reciprocity, but moving people, residents of Hawaii, from one island to the other. They have a cannabis card. They've gone through everything. But they live on Molokai, Kauai, the big island, and there are no dispensaries. Have we reached a point yet where we can fly from one island to the other? Because the only way you can get there is fly. Is, have we reached that point yet? No. Unfortunately, uh, we've created laws for most of the population to be able to access cannabis um, while we still have folks on, on some islands, uh, Lanai, Molokai, um, and, and in remote areas as well that, that won't really be able to access medicine. Uh, they, they may be able to get someone to grow cannabis for them, and, and certainly if they're in a remote part of our district, uh, Puna, here on the Big Island, we would make sure they had medicine. But uh, there's no way to really fly with medicine, so they could take a vacation and uh, try and heal themselves that way on an island that has a dispensary. But you There's know, not a lot of options. Even on Oahu, there are remote areas. All of the dispensaries are back to back, right close to each other, and that's all downtown Honolulu. But if you live on the North Shore. Uh, why and I, Kahuku, there's nothing for you but to make that long trek into town. So, right. have we reached? What is there a reason for that? That they are all bunched up together, that they can't spread out? Is there a reason for that? I mean, is there something in the law that says they have to be together? I, I don't that's, understand. That's a good question. Um, what, what they're trying to do is maximize profits for, you know, to meet their fiduciary responsibility with their shareholders. Um, by setting up corporations to run uh, the dispensaries, uh, essentially the responsibility of the investment team is to provide a return on that investment. So they've moved into population centers um, due to the limited number of dispensaries that the state allowed. So. Uh, each one can have two retail locations, and those locations are, are we're going to find those in highly populated areas. But wouldn't it make, I mean, couldn't they reach the same amount of money given the numbers of people that live further out? Um, couldn't you get a return on your investment by moving further out? I, I think so, um, but, you know, they, the, Industry Oversight Committee, which is uh, made up of representatives of the, the industry, mostly investment teams, uh, and I, there, there are two patients on, on that Oversight Committee as well. Um, 
you know, they saw reciprocity coming, right? They asked for it, and that's that's what they got. And so the idea for them is to move to an airport uh, because that's where half of their business will likely come from. Well, but I'm thinking of residents, people that live here and that live so far out, and we have these two uh, cannabis dispensaries, and they're owned by a separate, they're not owned by the same company. And yet the state says you have to be here, here, here. You can't be near a school, and you can't be near a base, and you can't be near this. But, okay, but there are people that live out there with cards that, that want to do this legally. They don't want to grow it in somebody else's backyard. It, it just seems discriminatory, I guess is the right word, to just close out people. Right, right. Well, <clears throat> you know, these challenges come in when, uh, when patients aren't really, when, you know, we, patients made a lot of recommendations. We had three uh, medical so-called marijuana task forces, and, and they all made recommendations that would allow for patients to access medicine in, in a lot of different ways and, and more easily and more cost-effective. But those recommendations were largely ignored, um, and a program was put into place um, that was, you know, setting things up a little more for tax and regulation, I think, than for uh, medical purposes. Uh, this isn't really a medical program we're dealing with. Uh, otherwise, the, the type of medicine grown and the type of medicine available to patients would be based on the needs of the approved medical conditions that the, the state has allowed people to access medicine for. Well, okay, let's, let's, we have a task force and all of these other things, and you're saying the legislature doesn't listen. Has the legislature well, been, do they have a task, do they have a working group where the legislators are educated in what this is, the, the medical. We're not talking about adults and recreation. We're talking about medicine. Are the red legislators uh, educated in this, what, what this is and what it isn't? It's a really good question, and I think there are different levels of consciousness going on. Um, we've heard some legislators want to tax the medicine as much as possible. We've heard some legislators who are completely against uh, making the medicine available. Um, you know, we everyone's at a different level, so it's it's really hard to stereotype or categorize our legislators because you know here in Puna we've got some amazing legislators that are you do trying their best to help. You, you're in fact the. Legislators from the Big Island, I think, are more progressive, more advanced than any others in the state, and that includes Honolulu. They really are. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted, and and Ruderman, with all of that land in Puna, I haven't talked to him, but I hope he's okay. You know. I. Yes, us too, and and. So, you know, to the education really is the key here. We need to raise this level of awareness, this level of consciousness continually because it's not that we're creating something new. You know, there's a lot of talk about, oh, it's new, we'll get adjusted to it, and that's just simply not true. Colorado has been legal uh, for more than five years. Our program from, since has been, you know, it's, what, seven, 18 years old now. 17 years old, and all of the issues, whether it's issues that are important to law enforcement, legislators, doctors, patients, all of these issues have really been worked through already in those states that, that legalized years ago. So uh, what, we, what we really have to do is show them that this isn't new. And in fact, uh, as you mentioned in the intro, you know, we're, we're talking about a 10,000-year-old plant that's had a relationship with humans for at least that long. So 
none of this is new. The focus, however, is in what's called a vertical integration model, which makes eight teams uh, responsible and accountable for delivering, growing, processing, and selling medicine to 25,000 patients in our state across islands. It's, so the, the focus uh, on that vertical integration is really what the challenge is. The economic opportunity in our communities is literally being sucked out of the cannabis plant and I would, put into the pocket of a, of a few. But if it's vertical, and I think what you mean is that every this dispensary grows, processes, and sells those here, rather than saying this organ, this company could grow and we can buy from you. And this company, we can test and this, so that you spread out the economic base. Could that? Right. We, we believe that licenses should be issued by the counties as they are in the other legal states and other, many other medical states so that those growers in our communities that have 30 years of experience of growing or more are able to share strains that they've been using to heal their neighbors. And by sharing those strains with the dispensaries, the dispensaries aren't the single location for growth, which mitigates a lot of risks involved with growing cannabis itself, uh, as we've seen with some of the dispensaries that have opened already. So, what, what I was thinking, okay, if we have a farm that is dedicated to growing so that the dispensary does not have that responsibility, that the dispensary can wholesale or however you do it from this farmer. We know it's certified. We know that it's pure. It's all tested and everything. Wouldn't you spread out the economic base? If that, that's what's going to happen. I think, I think maybe the challenge or some of the fear that seems to creep into this model um, is that if it's not centralized, then it's more difficult to control. And this plant has demonstrated it's impossible to control. I was just saying, uh, nobody's controlled it so far. <laughs> so. It, it hasn't worked so far. It hasn't worked. Uh, and and the, there's literally an ongoing drug war in our communities right now that is is turning to a more cannabis friendly posture that it's doing to the expense of privacy and uh, homeowner rights and uh, patients suffering in our hospitals where cannabis can't be administered. It, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of challenges. We, we believe that the economic opportunity should be spread amongst everyone in our community and take the emphasis and the control off of the plant and set an example for future generations so that it isn't this mystical thing that they need to try, uh, that it is a medicine and it's something that uh, patients need and rely on for their health. Now, you mentioned before about the patient's right uh, bill uh, that one of the other states has. Could you repeat that, please? Sure. So one of the early states to legalize uh, was the state of Washington. And they realized that they didn't have all of the information that they needed uh, early on. And they, they realized that they were probably going to make mistakes creating legislation. And Washington also has transparency laws. So a lot of light is being shown on, on this process as they were creating it. So rather than uh, be heavy-handed and um, controlling of, of this plant and the patient medicine, what they decided to do was create a Patient Protection Act first. And basically what that said was, in the event of a conflict between a patient or uh, law enforcement, that the patient had a, a legal right to that medicine uh, on the onset. And so this was really great. Uh, for patients that, that needed privacy protection, you know, there, there's a, a large number of issues that, that come with these things for patients. So uh, that's what they did. And, and we created our own version of the Patient Protection Act, and we shared that with legislators. We shared that amongst our community. And uh, 
we got a lot of feedback, and uh, it turned out to be just about the same as the three previous medical marijuana tax force forces recommended, um, with with some some extras that had been left out. Um, but that's it in a nutshell. The Patient Protection Act really was designed to protect patients in Washington, and, and we'd like to see one of those here as well. Yeah, especially so people can fly from one island to the other and not get all hoo-hooed about our own little session, Jeff Sessions interfering, watching, looking over your shoulder. Oh. Right, right. <laughs> and, and Congress did just... Um, agree, I'm not sure if they passed it, but they agreed to um, legislation that will uh, take funding away from the Department of Justice uh, for prosecuting medical cannabis patients. So that's a really favorable that's, sign. That's and, a good and sign. The, and the, the TSA works under the Department of Justice and Homeland Security. So uh, we believe that a couple of conversations could allow folks in Hawaii to fly into our island with, with no problem. Um, okay, now we are almost out of time, so tell us again about the event on Friday, May 25th. Uh, so tell us about that and how we on the other islands can tune in. Great, thank you. So this, this meeting will be a regular Hawaii patient uh, union event. Um, Hawaii Cannabis Organization is supporting the event, and uh, we'll have herbs for everyone with our author of the Herbal Connection, um, Ethan Nebelkoff. And uh, it's a really great safe space. Uh, we're at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, um, where conversations are okay about cannabis. And um, Everyone is invited. We, we welcome patients with any type of ailment to come and have a discussion. Uh, there'll be doctors present if they have questions, nurses uh, that they can ask questions from, and, and, and a lot of growers. We're really focused on growing. Well, okay, now give us the local address and, we, and the time and the place. Absolutely. It's uh, 117 Keave Street. That's in Hilo, Hawaii. We'll start at 5 p.m. on Friday, May 25th. Everyone's invited. The meeting will last about two hours, and there'll be lots of question and answer sessions. Okay, lots re of discussion. repeat that address one more time so we'll get it right. Thank you for asking. It's 117 Keave Street. That's K E A W E. In Hilo, we're right downtown Hilo, and we're in the University of Hawaii at Hilo Innovation Center. Ah, oh, okay, so people can recognize that. That's right, that's right. And, and of course, uh, anyone can go to hawaiicannabis.org forward slash subscribe, and they can get regular event updates, and we publish our, um, we publish events on all islands to, to everyone, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do our best. We hope we hope that as many of your viewers and listeners will, will come as possible. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure talking to you, and we will talk to you again after this event and before the next one. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, for helping to thanks for helping to heal our island. Aloha. Aloha.